Uh, each having to do with picking different sensors which are related to your um, balance. So first of all, the condition was vision and vestibular. That could be condition number one. The second condition is vestibular and somatosensory. Somatal sensory. The third one is when we only tweak the vestibular system. So we have three conditions where we're going to tweak three different components or combined version of various components that are closely related to our balance. Ah, so, first of all, I would need someone to collect data. That can be anyone. Who would like to do that? I need someone to collect data. We so have a volunteer. So, I would like you to create a table like this. So, uh, two columns for each. So, yeah, just make sure the names are correct. So, vision and vestibular, vestibular and surround sensory, and vestibular, because I think the one of elms has something wrong over here. If you could just fix that, and that means we're set. D here means double. T here means standard. Both of these are two different stands, standing stands configuration. Double meaning you're gonna stand like this. However, double also might be a stance like this. In contrast, the tandem stance would go like this. So you can already understand I'm having issues with balancing this. <coughs> now, you can intuitively understand what would actually happen if I stand like this and then tweak some of my sensors which has something to do with my balance control. Something's gonna change and I'm gonna tip off. Or like I'm gonna fall, something like that. So that's what we're gonna do. We are gonna tweak some of our sensors <coughs> and see how that contributes to our balance from a data that we will collect. So we, I need two participants, brave ones, because I got Scott over there, and I would like another person. If someone will hold my iPad so you can, I'll do it. Uh, you want to hold it? Oh, no, sure. <laughs> so, uh, the, the thing that you need to consider when you would like to be uh, this uh, participant is one of these runs that you would do involves you to take for 15 seconds in that period. And um, so, I'll just explain the first Oops. case. What's going to happen there is vision and vestibular. Here, I'm going to tweak my vision system. And the way I do it is I'm going to stand like this, hands well, like placed like this, relax, look in front, close my eyes, tilt my head up as far as it goes, like not break it. <laughs> then open my eyes, don't make this move, but just open my eyes, and someone else from the team would start a timer as I open <coughs> my eyes. And I'm gonna try to keep myself stable as naturally as possible. That means, what I mean specifically by that is, if you feel like dizzy, or if you feel like that you're having trouble balancing, let go and make a move. You don't, do not force balance yourself. We want to see what happens when you uh, tilt your head, open your eyes, and we want to see how that affects our balance system. So we don't want to 
force ourselves to balance. Uh, why is that the case? So, if you think about it, our vestibular system is going to go comprises of some anatomical components. Some of them are called macula, macula, what's the term? Sacula, sorry, sacula, macula, macula is there, right? Then we have olympic organs, then we have semicircular canals, all these kind of things. Uh, Depending on how you rotate your head or where you are placed in uh, space, how you see and what are the somatosensory environment, like other environmental factors that you have that affect your balance and they have some characteristics. So when you do this, something changes in your macula or the sacula, I guess, I don't, I don't explicitly remember what, but uh, something happens there and you have issues uh, with your balance. Why? Because if you think about it, if you are in a closed space and everything is moving around, like you know, like the theaters, like uh, where they play shows like fighter planes going at super speed or something, you feel you're losing balance, something like that. Have you ever had this, this experience? So it has something to do with your vision because your vision cannot stabilize on an object based on which, I mean, with reference to which you actually think you're stable or not. Something like that, just to give you an idea. I'm not trying to be precise over here. Um, so that's condition number one. This is your double stance. You stand like this, hands relaxed, eyes closed, head tilted. And when you reach the state, someone gets ready with the timer. You open your eyes, they start. And when you make a move, or you say stop or say like you feel dizzy or something, they stop the timer. So that's condition number one. Condition number two involves you to think your somatosensory system. What happens is like it's kind of the boat thing that you experience when you are in, on a boat, like a speedboat or I don't know. So kind of like that. So you find some kind of motion blurriness or something like that because your surface is not, you're not habituated with surfaces like this. So, so you will have trouble balancing yourself. You can balance yourself if you want. Say, I'm balancing myself, but the idea is you let go. <coughs> That's the idea, because we want to see the effect. Which one affects faster? Which one has more effect? So you can understand, this one would actually trigger your vestibular system, not only that, it has some effect on your sensors, so sensory sensors. So the pressure surfaces changes which you're not accustomed to and makes you lose control of your balance. Does this still not make sense? So for each of those conditions, you have two different stands. One is the double stance that I've shown. This one. And I have to stress again that you do not balance yourself like I'm doing right now. I'm balancing myself, but you do not. You just let go. Normal stance, you let go. But here, you see that I have not included vision. So when you stand over here, you close your eyes and you stand. So this, and you see it's a whole different game. So you close your eyes and lose balance. That's kind of the idea. Then the other position for this would be the very same thing, your head straight. So, here we go. This is the tandem one. This is funny, but, and I'm on video. <laughs> and so, so the idea is, close your eyes and let go. And someone collects the data. And Data collection starts when you close your eyes and you are completely in your normal stance. Someone is going to assist you as you stand. So we need two people. As before, we have already have like seven data collected over the other few sections. We're going to collect two from here and we'll have a decent amount well, of set. I'm going to make the data, give it back to you guys, so you have a bigger data set to work on and you, so you can visualize the thing more. So the last one is going to it's like merry-go-round. 
Uh, so, someone here yes. is gonna. Yes. Uh, so, I have done it twice already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm not gonna do it now. The first time when I did it was. I made a mistake because I forgot that tandem stands is that as opposed to this. So, I was like, in the first case, I was doing this. This was I, this is what I thought was tandem. And my students were like horrible and horrible, not horrible, like joking me. It's a joke, it's a joke. <laughs> so, uh, so it's like this, I did, and then I realized it's wrong. So I have to collect the whole data again. And then I have to like that. But anyways, that being said, someone is gonna come in, rotate the chair clockwise, because that's how we did for the other labs. Someone's gonna rotate clock, me clockwise, or the participant clockwise. I'm gonna keep my eyes open for 15 seconds, taking uh, account of the time we're there, uh, like using that clock, and someone else is going to take the, uh, type, the timer, the, the stopwatch person, I don't know. So, it's going to stop rotating, and then have to jump up, not jump, like literally jump, like just, and go to the double stance position, and see what happens. <laughs> so here, if you think about it, <clears throat> I'm only triggering, my vision is working, the I don't have weird surfaces, so the only thing which I'm triggering is my vestibular system. Like, like completely messing up is my vestibular system. So that being said, let's first let me let us collect the data first. How about that? So we can stop the pause the video for the time being, and uh, we collect the data, and we can. Um, uh, Okay, However, this time you're gonna look. This is second one, yeah, so much sensory. This time you're gonna look straight. When you close your eyes, I'll let go. And then that's when. So when he closes his eyes, that's when you start the timer, and that's the same time I'm gonna let him go. Okay. This time you're looking straight. Because we are not. Uh, we are. We are taking out the vision system. Like. His vision system will find it right up to the thing, but what was I making? Okay. Don't force yourself yet. 3.65. See? Things change. Which is intuitive that this is going to change. So. YouTube. <laughs> I'm doing this. A 4.10. So, yeah. We have, uh, then the last one would be someone else would have to come and rotate him clockwise because we want to be consistent across the rotations between him and him. So I want someone else to come in and rotate him for 15 seconds mm -hmm. at a decent speed, not killing him. Come on, so give me up here. Yeah, come in. So whenever you're gonna, so this time it have, you start the timer when he stands up, goes into the double stance, okay. and you stop it. When, when he falls, okay. falls. So, and you're gonna start the timing a timer on your own. So you're gonna, 15 seconds is complete up to you. You're gonna decide on that. Uh, right, pick your feet up. Clockwise rotation. Right, it's gonna go like this. <laughs> Just to be precise. <laughs> Wait, your eyes are open. Oh. Should I stop? 15 seconds is when you stop. After 15 seconds, you have to get up and do the thing. You would have to let yourself go if you feel like, like it. 6.80. I could automatically go like his army. He knows that. Yeah. So let's wait too. one minute for that. His system stabilizes. I don't know. Did you get the 6.80? <laughs> yeah. You So let, let us know when you're ready. Well, I like your arm stance. We don't want the effect to stay. 
So maybe we can wait one minute before you can do it. I mean, I know you're going to do it. Just so that we're all... Can wait another 30 seconds? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. 12, in that case. But if it's 12, it's hard. Then it's okay with this? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be a hit YouTube sensation. That's what Dennis does best. Oh, you are actually doing... Uh, no, he decided to do it. Just okay. video taping him. Okay. Just, uh, you can add it to your video. Yeah. Get busy. Get busy. Get busy. Get busy. 0.95. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all I didn't think I could put a push up. You're closing your eyes, you're going to tilt your head up. When you open eyes, Victoria is going to start taking the data. Okay, cool. So, shoulders fine, relax. Stay relaxed, don't force yourself to balance. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You're always being left there. You had 15 seconds. The only thing is, I was thinking, like, you know, gone this way. He actually decided to Yeah, you look like you were just going to, like, fall backwards slowly. Maybe it's just. About it, question number one says, fill up this table, you get one point for that. And if you think about it more closely, I'll, I'm going to do that for you. So that's it. You're going to get one by default. So, I mean, of course, you're going to get 10 by default. Okay, so, assuming this data is completely collected, <coughs> Cancel it. Cancel it. For 200 people and other seven or eight people from, from the rest of the sections that I'm what you do is for each of these columns you get the average values and if you think about it, they are in seconds and they have two conditions and so conditions double and tenant then we have, I'm saying this one to be one, this one to be two, this one to be three vestibular to be three, whereas vision vestibular to be one so we are going to create a graph where the x-axis are going to be our conditions, one, two, and three, one being vision and vestibular, two being vestibular somatosensory, three being vestibular only, or you can select it your way as well, but this way, uh, I think it's, it would be better because it's, it's, it would be easier for you to explain. So, and the y-axis are the average time in seconds. So as you plot this data, maybe scatter plot or something, you see that you'll have two different data sets. One for the double, one for the ten sets. And both of them are being represented by something different. Something different, like some different symbols. Can anyone guess which one is which here? Like what does star mean over here? Is it the double one? Or this one is the double, double stance position? Just to give you an idea, like just try to think about it. What's your guess? Uh, double one with a star. With the star. Do you have an explanation for that? Because uh, there's more seconds in that stance. Exactly, because you are more stable in this kind of state. So you, you can stay balanced a little longer as close <coughs> to your tandem sets. So we expect the graph to go a little like this, because you know, in the first case, this was very good, like, you're just doing this, things are fine. I mean, well, some, we tipped off a little, but still it was fine. The second case, things got bad, with the somatic sensory system being triggered, as well as the vestibular. At the end, we have completely vestibular system being messed up completely, and we find a graph like this. So this would make, you should make, this data should make sense 
of uh, our intuitive knowledge of balance. Now, so this is question number two, just creating the graph from your table. Question number three talks about explaining your graph, where you are going to explain the graph and you're going to relate all the information back and forth with your theory to reason why you think your data is correct. So, this time I would request you guys to write down this because these are things that I would expect you guys to write as you to type your questions. So, I would request you guys to have a look into the vestibular system, the different components, not necessarily that you have to talk about all of them. You might just want to look into the different components, like as I said, the olivic organs, the semicircular canals, uh, the sacula, the macula, all these things, and what are the characteristics, how are they affected, and what happens when they're affected, and maybe you can relate all those information with the data and reason. <coughs> Make the comparative reasoning. Comparing all these three different states, you have to compare three different states, three different conditions, using the knowledge that you know about your vestibular system and its components and how they work in helping you balance when you answer this question. Might seem a mouthful, but trust me, I don't expect any of the answers to go beyond 100 or 150 words. You can just think about it a little bit and concise all the information and place it there. As long as they compare everything in a reasonable scientific fashion, I am fine with it. Uh, the word limits are just to give you an idea of how I want the answers, uh, if it, it's not fixed. Okay, now, which leads to question number four, which says, why did we actually do this kind of a stance? What was the purpose of us doing this stance or this stance? Now, this should also be intuitive for you guys. So, if you make a stance like this, this is important, guys. So, if you make a st if you're standing like this, what happens is you will see that you're in like inherently <coughs> balanced. Why? I'm going to explain from the perspective of basic physics. You have your center of gravity over here, which has all the information about your mass which creates a weight force downwards. And so what happens is, based on your stance, you have a counter moment like this. You have a moment like this, from this leg and this side of the body, and you have a counter moment like this from this side of the body. These two moments balance each other, and you are in an equilibrium phase over here, right? Like this, so you are inherently somehow balanced. Now, if you think about it, how would you make someone fall? I mean, if you push someone like this, like just by pushing like this, from this side, my possibility of, like, what was the word that you said? Falling? Oh. The possibility of falling would be less as compared if you push me from the back. Because my system is stabilized in this rotation phase, two different rotation phase. Uh, Moment phase, mo mo considering the moments. This is not like moments, like these moments, that moments, it's physics <coughs> moments. F into R, if I'm not mistaken. Force into radius. Anyways, uh, just to give you an idea, I mean, so if somebody would push me from this side, I'm going to balance myself this way because it's somehow it's going to balance me. However, if someone is going to push me from the back or from the front, my possibility of falling is higher. And because my base is wide, I'm a little more stable. Now, what happens in the tandem stance is you do this, and if a little perturbation is like this, your, your moment is this direction. And there is no counter moment to balance yourself unless you actually push yourself this way. So I'm falling like this, I'm creating a counter moment like this. But since you're not doing this in this lab, you're not balancing yourself. 
So what happens is you're going to tip off. Your possibility of tipping off is higher. So we actually wanted to force you guys to tip off to, and to see how the different sensors relating to our vestibular system affects our balance. So I hope this thing <coughs> makes sense. So I would like you guys to think in this ways as you approach this answer. What else? Okay, so I'm sure I'm missing something. No, I think I think these are fine. <coughs> if there is something that comes to my mind, I'll speak it out. Question number five is where you can explain a sensory motor integration idea from our body, which has to be explicitly related to which has to explicitly relate to movement and just discuss. So one of the sensory integration ideas uh, for the human body was balance, where we have different sensors and it helps us to balance ourselves. But since we have talk, we are going to talk about all those in the first four questions, the fifth one that you're going to choose is something other than balance, which has been explicitly mentioned in the questionnaire. I'm certain. So uh, that being said, uh, lab number nine, balance control, has been introduced. We will have the data by tonight. You will all have access to the data by tonight. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions regarding any of the things that I've talked about now, uh, you can ask me now. If you have other questions, please shoot me through an email or something that would remind you. But now we go back to the most important thing here: submit. Your